Hi everyone, welcome to class. This is called hip flexors. For this class, you'll need to set up your mat against the wall like we've been doing. You won't need any other props for this. When you're ready, I'll meet you here on the mat. Hi everyone, welcome to class. We're going to start this hip flexor class uh, with some lunges. And before we start, let's just talk a little bit about um, this area and how it applies in the method and how it applies in backbending. So when we're, when we're backbending, essentially we're using our entire body. Uh, so even though, you know, like we said before, we're kind of uh, focusing on one area at a time, when you're doing these exercises or when we're holding asanas, of course you'll feel everything. But we're just taking our focus to different areas. In this class, we're focusing on the hip flexors. So uh, it includes the psoas, but also you'll, you'll feel a little bit uh, of an opening in the quadriceps. Um, and in some cases, a little bit higher um, towards the front abdominals, the abdominal area. So it's, it's kind of a lot. And in some cases, we'll also, when we're taking a full or back bend, you'll also uh, start going into your back body a little bit more, into the chest, into the shoulders, into the throat. Um, so in, in none of these exercises, it, is it just uh, the hip flexors? It usually will take you a little bit deeper um, and eventually into a full back bend feeling. The reason that we want to focus on the hip flexors is because when we're doing a back bend, what's happening is the front side of the body is stretching. So all the way from, all the way from your chin bone over here to the pubic bone, these two points you can imagine are stretching away from each other. So everything between your chin and your pubic bone is going to stretch. And at the same time, everything between your tailbone and the topmost vertebra on the back of the neck is going to come towards each other. So the front side of the body is expanding and the back side of the body is coming towards each other. In a very even back bend, you'll notice almost a circular shape where the top of the head comes close to the tail, to your tailbone. The top of the head and the tailbone come towards each other and it's not a hinge in any way or a fold in any way. It makes a nice circular shape. And in order to do that, we have to find a lot of length, right? A lot of length in front side body, which is why we're focusing on our quadriceps, the psoas, the hip flexors, the abdominals, right? It makes sense. We really have to understand that though, because even though it's simple and it makes sense, sometimes we forget that we're stretching the front side as we strengthen the back side. So we're going to get started with some lunges. While we will be stretching the hip flexor area, you'll also feel a burn, usually on the top of the thigh, maybe around the glutes, uh, because holding lunges can be challenging. So uh, as always, if you ever need to modify or take a little break, feel free to do so. That is completely fine. Okay, so I'm going to start in a high lunge with my right foot forward and you can just take a step coming into your high lunge position and just briefly talk about the alignment here. Uh, the right knee is on top of the right ankle. I'm high up on my back toes rather than having the heel close to the floor. I'm pressing my heel forward on top of the toes. This way I can really feel the hip flexor group on my left thigh. You wanna make sure that your tailbone is dropping. So what I want to avoid is this, right? My pubic bone coming down and back and my sitting bones reaching back. I want to avoid this because it takes away any sort of stretch from the hip flexors. So what you want to do is send the knee forward 
on top of the ankle and really drop your tailbone, almost tucking. I would say for the purpose of this uh, conditioning exercise, really tucking your tailbone forward and pulling the abdominals and the navel back. In this way, I can feel already a tremendous lengthening on the back leg. So if you don't feel it, chances are you're not tucking your tailbone enough. Okay. Front thigh a little bit fiery. You can take a little break, straighten it, and come back. Okay, arms up. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms to face up. Inhale, lift your shoulder blades up. Exhale, release them down. Good, inhale, lift them up, keep them there. Exhale, squeeze your legs straight. Deep inhale. Exhale, bend your knee. We're going to bend the back knee about an inch from the floor and squeeze it back, tuck the tail, tailbone forward. Again, squeeze the front leg straight for a little break. Exhale, bend the right knee, prepare length in the back leg, inhale. Exhale, bend your knee a few inches from the floor, tuck your tailbone, squeeze the leg straight. Little break, last one. Prepare with the shoulder blades up. Bend your knee right over the ankle, inhale, exhale, a few inches from the floor, tuck your tailbone, and squeeze it straight. Good, release the hands, shift the weight forward, and take a little break. Let everything release. You'll notice the blood flow, you'll notice the engagement. Try and let it go, use your breath. We'll try the other side. So we're stepping the right foot back this time. Get a nice long lunge going. And we'll just check out the alignment really quick. Knee over ankle, heel is coming right on top of the toes there. So I'm high up on my toes and I'm tucking my tailbone forward. I'm usually not a fan of a tuck so much, but you really want to exaggerate the dropping of the tail so that we can really feel the, uh, the right hip flexor group here extending and stretching. Get a little break on your left leg there. And we'll come into the lunge again. Okay, tailbone dropped and tucked, belly in, inhale the arms up, interlace your fingers, flip the palms, Stretch your shoulder blades up and pull them down. One more time, lift them up. I'll pull them down, lift your shoulder blades up, squeeze the left leg straight. Prepare, inhale, exhale. I'm bending the knee and exhale, squeeze it straight, tucking the tail. Squeeze the leg straight, prepare, inhale. I'm bending the knee over the ankle, stretch long, inhale, exhale, tuck the tail, squeeze the leg straight, inhale, exhale, bending the knee, inhale, exhale, tucking the tail, squeeze the leg, all right, almost there, stretch up, inhale, exhale as you lower, inhale, Exhale, squeeze it straight, last one, left hip back, right hip forward, stretch up, bend your knee, hips forward, tailbone tucked, bend the knee down, squeeze it straight, and change, all right, shift the weight forward, come to the top of your mat, take a little break, so it's a lot. This is years of work, okay? Years of dedication, years of observation, years of sending your breath and energy there. So be sure to take it day by day. And it's like I always say, the time will pass anyway. Your time will pass anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're gonna go into a low lunge. Low lunges are great because we're on the floor. So now you can uh, have the help of the floor as you move into your hip flexors. They're nice and warm now. So, right foot forward. 
bend the left knee behind you. So if you have sensitive knees, uh, you can put something under your knee or double up your mat like this. Place your knee on it. I'm okay, but if you're someone who has sensitive knees, make sure that you're doing something about it. Now, the knee is over the ankle, just like we had in our, um, in our high lunge. Our hips are coming forward, and you don't really need to tuck your tailbone here as much, but I definitely want to feel the navel moving back towards my spine. And what's really important here is that we learn to engage from the inner foot all the way through the inner thighs. It feels like you're closing a pair of scissors. So you're going to draw the inner thighs towards each other. All right, sitting nice and low in the lunge. Take your hands over the hips, right above, uh, right below, around the lower back, right above your butt. Really use your hands to press yourself forward. Press your hips forward and down. Imagine that your left hip can one day touch the floor. But at the same time, remember, we're not just sinking. It's as if you're closing those scissors. Press your hips forward and down. From here, we'll take the right hand to the floor and we're going to extend the left side body quite a lot by taking the left arm up. So now, by taking the left arm up, you can really press your left hip forward, lift the left shoulder blade up, and as you lean over to the left side, we're taking the stretch a little bit deeper in the hip flexor. One more breath. And exhale to come back to center, good. Keep drawing the hips forward and down. Sinking nice and low. And then from here, I'm going to balance on the right leg, bending the left knee. Again, if you need a cushion under the knee, that's no problem. I'm going to reach my left arm back, hold on from the inside of the foot, and bend the elbow as I turn the fingers forward. Deep stretching here. Deep inhale, exhale, pull the heel in towards you. Deep inhale, exhale, pull the heel in towards you. Last time, deep inhale, exhale, pull the heel in towards you. Hold it for three, two, one, and change. All right, you can take a moment in this counter stretch in a halfway split, that feels nice. And we'll try the other side, low lunge. The left foot comes forward. Place the knee on top of the ankle. Draw the inner thighs towards each other. I like the uh, visual very much of a pair of scissors because we've all used scissors. So the image of an open pair of scissors and closing them that's what it should feel like here. Okay, so I'm gonna take my hands just uh, at the base of my, of my back. And I'm using these hands, using my hands to press your hips forward, or to press my hips forward rather. So the right hip comes forward and down and I'm doing the best I can to really extend the point from hip to knee. So the thigh area relaxes and extends, but the inner thighs draw in towards each other. Sinking the hips closer and lower. Belly in. Shoulders are still over the hips. And then take the left fingertips to the floor. 
Okay, let's reach the right arm up, right shoulder blade up, and I'm going to take a lateral stretch over to the left side. I'm taking the stretch on the right side hip flexors and extending it all the way through my fingers. This feels great because I'm taking a sensation and expanding it in my body. So imagine using your breath, take it exactly where you feel the sensation and expand it to the entire right side body, toe tips to fingertips. One more breath. Good. And exhale, slowly release. Good. All right, from here, a little bit of balance. I'm gonna take the left elbow over my left knee. Reach back, grab your foot from the inside. I'm bending my elbow and turning the fingers forward like the toes. Deep inhale. Exhale, pull the heel in towards you. Inhale. Exhale, pull the heel in towards you. Last time. Inhale. Exhale. Hold three, two, one. Okay. And that's enough. Slowly. I'm going to change. You can lean back a little bit, get a little bit of a counter stretch. Because as you know, the thing is, is with those lunges, right, is that as I'm stretching the back side of the back leg, the front leg is, has the job of supporting. And it can be quite a challenge. So make sure that you're getting a nice counter stretch there. And then you can release. Okay. The third in the lunge groups is the extended lunge. So it's almost like um, a point between lunge and split. And the reason that I love this lunge is because it really allows us to focus on the hip flexor opening instead of in a full split where we might be focused a lot on the, on the hamstring of the front leg as well. So here we go. Step the right foot forward. You're going to come into that same lunge position, but this time you'll have your foot, your ankle, past the line of the knee. This allows you to lower your back hip down much closer to the floor. At the same time, I don't have to worry about being in a split. I don't have to focus at all on my hamstring. So extended lunge is a great for those of us especially who know that we need to work on our hip flexors more so than say our hamstrings. You can stay right where you are and hold this pose or if you like to, if you like to intensify this, you'll take the back hand and grab your foot from the inside just like we did in the lunge. I'm turning my fingers forward as I bend the elbow. I take a deep breath and I always use the exhalation, right? To take the movement. So inhale inwards, exhale outwards and take the stretch. Inhale, take in the breath, exhale, release. Inhale, take it in, exhale, release. Last time, inhale, exhale, hold your pose. Three, two, one. Okay, that's enough. Change, I'm going to take my right knee back, step the left foot forward. You're gonna get into your extended lunge. So you can toe heel your left toes forward. The left heel, is in front of the left knee. Right hip comes forward and now I can actually feel my right hip, my right thigh flat on my mat. It's a beautiful shape and I don't think, you know, most of us don't practice this often. So uh, hopefully you like it as much as I do. Now to, t to stay here is enough. It really is a nice option. Um, but if you like to, Go ahead and grab the back knee. You can do it with me. 
I'm going to pick up my foot from the inside, and then as I bend the elbow, I turn my fingers forward. But your elbow has to bend. Take a deep inhale, and exhale, draw the heel in. Deep inhale, and exhale, draw the heel in. Inhale, breathing, fill up the lungs. Exhale, release. Inhale, breathing to fill up. Exhale, release. Last one. Inhale, breathing. Exhale. Hold your pose. Three, two, one. Change. Okay, use your hands. Shift the weight onto your hands and step back. Take a little break. Sit the hips on the heels. Okay. So we've done the high lunge, we've done our uh, low lunge and our extended lunge, and the next thing we're going to do is King Arthur, and we do this with the wall. So this is essentially another lunge, except that this time we have the support of the wall and we're really going to be able to spend a little bit more time since we have the support of the wall. So you can feel free also, uh, depending on how you feel today, to pause the video and spend as long as you like in the stretch. As always, feel free to put something under your knee because more often than not, that needs to happen. So I'm going to have my left shin against the wall, my left toes pointing straight up, no sickle in the ankle, the right knee on top of the right ankle, my right middle toe pointing forward. Stabilize your hips. You probably need to drop the right hip down. And then we're going to exaggerate the dropping of the tail. And as you tuck your tailbone forward, you will begin to feel a deep and active stretch on your left thigh. That's what we want. If you start to tilt your pelvis backwards, creating a back bend, you will feel nothing. So if you feel nothing, it's because your pelvis is in a isn't in the right position. So you need to drop your tailbone down and tilt your pelvis forward. And now we wait. So there's two different kinds of waiting. One kind of waiting is where you're just kind of using the present moment. It's like, uh, a means to an end, I guess. Just kind of waiting for it to be over so something better can come. That's not the kind of waiting that we want. The second kind of waiting is the waiting in which we're present. We're so present, uh, we know that in our presence, we know that in this practice, a blossoming will happen on its own. It's like watching a flower blossom. No one's going to force it, but it's beautiful to watch. Okay. Take your fingertips to the floor, see? And we're going to switch our legs. Take the right chin to the wall. Take your left foot forward. Knee over the ankle. No sickle in the back foot, please. Middle toes back, middle toes forward. If your tailbone isn't tucked forward, unfortunately, you won't feel anything. So you have to tuck your tailbone forward, and we have to lengthen the whole front side thigh. Drop your left hip down, push the floor away. Always. You know, you're always applying the first step of the method. So you're always observing. And you're always taking the seat of the witness, the seat of the higher self. And since we're not bending back here, the second step doesn't really apply but you can still fill the chest area with volume and 
if you can manage it, even some joy. One more breath. Okay, that's enough. Slowly lower. Take a little break. <sighs> okay, so it's a lot. Uh, we're working, targeting a specific area. Take your time. The next thing that we're going to work on is we're also going to be using the wall. And this is tiger pose with the wall. Um, we usually, you know, do tiger on the mat, but we're going to practice tiger pose with the wall today. So you're going to be taking the feet to the wall, your hips over the knees, your shoulders over the wrist, and then from here I'm going to lift my left leg up. Good. So make sure the outer left thigh down, the outer left thigh is down. Otherwise, what might happen is an external rotation like this, and we want to avoid that completely because with an external rotation, not only are you misaligned, you're not going to get any sort of hip flexor extension. So you gotta make sure your left hip is pointing down. Shoulders over the wrist, apply your chest bone forward, shoulders back. And from here, you can play with pulsing forward and back. Bring your hips forward and back. Okay, you can begin to take your uh, left knee towards the wall. And from here, see how you feel? You can start bending your left knee. I like to come up on my fingertips. You can try that too if you like. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, release the head back. You might see your toes. If you see your toes, see if you can begin to pull your foot towards you towards your head. If the foot touches the head, make the connection and hold it for three, two, one. Change, look forward. Place your hands flat on the floor. Come forward away from the wall and change. Okay, sit down for a moment because you might feel a little bit of heat in your arms. So you can take a few shoulder rotations. And then we'll try our other side. OK. Take your hands underneath the shoulders, the hips over your knees, the soles of the feet touching with the wall. Let's try the other side. So I'm going to lift my right leg up. First, I have to test that my outer right thigh is rotating downwards, meaning my hips are square. So I want to avoid external rotation. You'll notice that I'm dipping my hips back. That's okay. So I'm not here. I'm not, my hips are not over my knees anymore. I'm tilting them back so that I can feel a hip flexor stretch. Okay, that's why we have the wall here. This wouldn't be possible without the wall supporting us. Go ahead and take a few pulses. The more you lean back, right, the deeper the stretch will be. So you can stop with your knee, your thigh coming close to the wall. I'm going to come up on my fingertips. Push your chest forward. Look up, and if you like, you can start bending the knee, connecting foot to head, head to foot. Hold your pose. OK, and slowly release. <sighs> Take a little break. That was a lot. OK, taking a few rotations here of the shoulders. You can reach for opposite 
shoulder, give yourself a hug and try the other one. Really nice. So that's our hip flexor class. Uh, hip flexors are uh, a very important part of finding front side body mobility and finding a complete back bend. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.